Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to draft, cut and sew an 8 pieces blouse with an insert peplum design detail. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. My full scale basic bodice pattern. Cello tape. Pins. Ideally, a pencil should be used to draft a pattern. For a tutorial, you can use of this black marker pen, paper scissors, calculator, rulers and curves, tracing wheel, tape measure. So I have here my full scale basic bodice pattern which I drafted using the bust that technique. The link of the tutorial will be above and in the description box below. The front length of the bodice is 25 inches, while the back length is 23 inches. I deliberately made the front length 2 inches shorter than what I want the actual final length of the blouse to be. This is because the inset peplum will also add to the length of the blouse. I will now go ahead to alter the basic neckline. I will use 3.5 inches for the front neck depth and I will make the shoulder just 1.5 inches wide. I will now go ahead and redraw the front neckline curve like this. For the back, I will also make the shoulders just 1.5 inches wide and I will use 3.5 inches for the back neck depth. I will now go ahead to redraw the back neckline curve like this. It is now time to do the underboss tightening. My shoulder to under bust measurement is 13 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 13 inches from the neck point downwards like this. I will square a horizontal line across like this. And this line is the under bust line. My around under bust measurement is 34 inches. So I'll go ahead and divide my around under bust measurement by 4 and this is 34 over 4 and this is equal to 8.5 inches. So on the under bust line, starting from the center front, I'll go ahead to measure and mark 8.5 inches like this. I'll measure what I have left. And this gave me one inch and three quarter. So on this dart leg, closer to the center front, I will measure and mark three quarter of an inch. On this other dart leg, I will measure and mark the remaining one inch. I will now connect these two points to the tip of the waist dart like this. I will use a slight curve for the, for the connection, but you can also use a ruler for this. I will also connect these two points to the darts at the waistline like this. If you have a very flat stomach, you can also connect the two points all the way down to the end of the waist dart. So now I'm done with the underboss tightening. I will now go ahead to locate and mark the middle of the front neckline curve like this. I 
I will now connect the middle point to the tip of the front waist dart, like this. For the back pattern, I will also locate and mark the middle of the back neckline curve, like this. I will not include the zip allowance when trying to locate the middle point of the neckline curve. I will also connect the middle point to the tip of the back waist dart, like this. I will now extend the front and the back dart down to the end of the pattern, like this using straight lines. I will now go ahead to cut out the back and the front pattern pieces. I will also make sure that I label all the pieces so as to avoid confusion later on while sewing. I will also close the bust dart like this using my cello tape. These are the two back pattern pieces, and I have pinned the lower part of the two pattern pieces on another pattern paper. Starting from the waistline, I will create an A-line design on the pattern pieces. At the end of the two pattern pieces, I will do 3 inches extension on both sides of the two back pattern pieces. I will connect them to the waistline using slanted lines. I will curve the two ends of both pattern pieces by half an inch. I will also do the same thing for the front two pattern pieces as well. I will use my cello tape to secure the pattern pieces in place and I will also remove the pins. I will now cut out the back and the front pattern pieces. So these are the four pieces for the front and the back of the blouse. I will now move over to the sleeve. I have 
have here my basic sleeve pattern which I'm going to alter into a pop sleeve design. So the first thing I'll do is to divide the basic sleeve into two equal sections via the middle line on the pattern. I will divide it into three equal sections vertically like this. On the lower part of the pattern paper, I will draw a horizontal guideline like this. Then I will cut the sleeve pattern into three sections. At the middle part, the first sleeve piece, I will use one inch for the spread because the sleeve will be cut on fold. I will use two inches for the spread of the other two pieces. I will raise the tip of the sleeve by 2 inches like this. I will now go ahead to redraw the tip of the sleeve edge like this. I will now go ahead to cut out the puff sleeve pattern. This side will be cut on fold. I will make use of the following items to sew the blouse. A pair of scissors, tape measure, lining fabric. I will make use of this lovely African print fabric with a border design at the end of the fabric. The design at the end of the fabric will be used for the insert peplum. I have also gone ahead to cut out all the pattern pieces on my fabric. I will make use of crinoline and some interfacing also. So these are the two front pattern pieces. I used half an inch seam allowance all through, except for the side seam where I used two inches side seam allowance. So as you can see, the line is half an inch shorter than the main fabric. I cut two pieces of the lining fabric for each pattern piece and I've already interfaced and padded the side of the lining pieces. I also cut two pieces of the African print fabric for each, pet, pet, for each pattern piece. I will also go ahead and label all the pieces on the wrong sides so as to know which is which later on while sewing. These are the two back pieces. The sides that will be joined together should be notched. Same thing should be done for the front pieces as well. I use half an inch seam allowance all through, except for the side seam where I use two inches size seam allowance. I did not add any seam allowance to the center back because I already have a one inch zip allowance at the center back. All the pieces should be labeled on the wrong side so as to avoid confusion later on while joining the pieces together. This is the puff sleeve and I cut two pieces on fold. I used half an inch seam allowance all through except for the side seam where I used one inch side seam allowance. These are the back pieces. I interfaced just the necklines of the back pieces on the wrong side on both the main outer fabric and the lining fabric as well. I have also gone ahead to notch the sides that will be joined together so as to avoid confusion while sewing. These are the front pieces. I interface the necklines of the main exterior pieces on the wrong side as you can see. First I will paint the two front pieces together like this, right right side. Note that I'm painting the center front together as the center front was not cut on fold. 
I will now go ahead and paint the two side pieces to both ends of the middle front piece like this. Also right sides will be together. Once I'm done painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. These are the back pieces. The back will be joined together to form two pieces. One center, one center back piece and one side piece will be joined together, right side to right side. Once I'm done painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. So now the stitching has been done. I've also gone ahead to join the front and back shoulder seams together on both the main exterior fabric and the lining fabric as well. This is the lining and on the lining, I have already drawn horizontal guidelines on the front and back lining pieces. These horizontal lines are the waistline of the blouse. And this is where the inset peplum will be fixed. I want the peplum to extend beyond the main blouse by about 2 inches. So the length of the inset peplum will be 9 inches long. I will now cut a full circle flare for the front and the back peplums, making it a total of 720 degree peplum. So, the first thing I would do is to measure the length of the front waistline on the lining fabric like this. The front waistline is 23 inches. I will now divide this 23 inches by 6.28 because I intend to cut a full circle flare. And this is equal to 3.7 inches. And this value is the radius of the flare. For the back, I will also go ahead to measure the length of the back waistline like this and the value is 27.5 inches I will also divide this by 6.28 and this is equal to 4.4 inches and this is also the radius the radius for the back flare the length of the flare is inches which will be 2 inches longer than the than the main bodies of the blouse I will use this fabric to cut out the flare this fabric is the design at the end of the fabric which I have already cut out and also joined together so that the fabric will be enough to cut out the flare. You can also use a beautiful contrast fabric to cut the inset peplum instead of this. So I will fold the fabric into four like this. I will measure out the 3.7 inches which is the radius for the front flare. I will also measure out 9 inches for the length of the flare plus additional 1 inch for seam allowance. I will now go ahead to cut out the full circle flare. I will open up one end of the flare like this. 
I will also go ahead and cut out the flare for the back and also the lining fabric as well. So this is the full circle flare for the front. The right side is facing up. I will now place the lining piece on top like this. Right sides are together. I will align the two pieces very well. I will now go ahead and pin this crinoline on top of the two pieces like this. Once I'm done pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. After sewing, I understitch the seam allowance to the lining fabric and this will be keep the this will keep the crinoline family in place. I also noticed that I have some excess at the waistline of the insert peplum, which I do not want to trim off. Instead, I just gather the waistline of the peplum pieces. It is now time to fix the insert peplum to the lining. So I will place the peplum on top of the lining piece like this. The lining of the peplum is facing the right side of the main lining piece like this. I will pin the peplum in place using the horizontal guideline which I have already drawn on the waistline of the lining as a guide. Once I am done pinning, to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I have also gone ahead to do the same thing for the back pieces as well. I have also gone ahead to sew the necklines of the main exterior fabric and the lining fabrics together using half an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the necklines and I knocked the seam allowances all around the necklines, I now went ahead to understitch the seam allowances to the neckline of the lining fabric. So it is now time to close this open end that is at the front and also at the back of the blouse. So I will flip the lining and the main exterior pieces together like this, so that right sides are together. I will paint in place. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the two back pieces as well. So now the stitching has been done as you can see for both the front and the back pieces. It is now time to join the side seams together. I will also go ahead and fix this zip to the center back of the blouse. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. And I've also fixed the zip to the center back of the blouse. I will now go ahead and turn the blouse to the wrong side to show you how I joined the side seams together. 
So this is how I join the sides together. I just join the front and the back side seams together, right side to right side, using 2 inches side seam allowance, which was the allowance that I used when I was cutting out the fabric. I now went ahead to knitting the raw edges using the bias tape that I cut out from the exact same African print fabric. You can also overlock it if you have, if you have an overlocker. These are the two sleeve pieces. What I will do now is just to create a casing for the elastic that, that I will insert at the end of the sleeve. So I'll go ahead and stitch the end of the sleeve. So I will fold the end like this and I will stitch in place, thus creating an, a casing for the elastic, for the elastic which, which I will insert to the end of the sleeve. I will also pleat the upper part of the sleeve and I will also join the side seams together. So now the stitching has been done for the two sleeve pieces. I will now go ahead and fix the sleeves to the armhole of the blouse using half an inch sewing allowance. So now I have fixed the sleeves and this is the final look of the blouse. I have also gone ahead to knitting the raw edges all around the armhole using the bias tape which I cut out from the exact same African print fabric. You can also overlock it if you have an overlocker. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are, inter who are interested in sewing and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Th Bye and thank you so much for watching.